So a video came out recently that made me twitchy, I guess is the word. Looking at it, I felt a little apprehensive, and you might be able to tell just by looking at the title. I want to preface my criticisms of this video by saying I have nothing against this YouTuber. I think she's got a lot going for her, and I'm not by any means calling her out. I don't think she's entirely wrong, I just really disagree with her, and I will endeavor to respond as respectfully as possible. That being said, I do find most of the criticisms in this video kind of carelessly made. If you didn't watch it, save yourself half an hour, I'll break it down for you. My main issue with this video is the argument itself. And the argument that she's making is, one, beauty standards are bad. We agree there. Two, people get plastic surgery to conform to beauty standards. And three, therefore, plastic surgery is bad. But the thing about that is that you can't know any individual's motivation to get plastic surgery. People have any number of motivations for cosmetically altering their bodies, and there's no way of knowing who has intrinsically good and intrinsically bad motivations. If someone gets a nose job to improve their self-esteem, is that feminist plastic surgery? What if someone was getting a breast reduction to relieve back pain? This line of thinking requires us to draw a line between what is good and bad plastic surgery. And I don't think that's really productive. I think what's safe plastic surgery and at what age certain procedures become legal is a more interesting conversation. I don't personally think that people should get plastic surgery before their brains are finished developing, but I also believe that everybody should have agency over their own body. The entire argument being made in this video is operating under the assumption that there is exactly one reason that cis women get surgery, and that's patently untrue. Jordan's video also kind of begs the question as to whether we need to look at everything's percentage of feminist cred. It is often necessary to unpack traditions and practices, but I don't think we need to have the is this feminist conversation about every little thing. We do need to see the world through an intersectional feminist lens. But I don't think this particular line of thinking is useful to anyone. Jordan does talk about how plastic surgery has become more normalized and accessible. My only concern about that is safety, because plastic surgery can have adverse effects. I don't think it's bad that surgery is available for people who want it. But the medical establishment in the United States has a lot of problems that are reflected in the industry of plastic surgery and cosmetic enhancement. So I think when Jordan's talking about the medical industry being bad, she's working up the right tree. I also agree with the idea that young people shouldn't think it's normal for everyone to get plastic surgery at an early age. And a lot of them are seeing it be normalized amongst their favorite influencers. While plastic surgery is certainly less stigmatized than it used to be, it is by no means normal because most people in the United States can't afford a dentist, let alone a plastic surgeon. I strongly agree with her that this is a class and a wealth issue. Jordan actually goes into great deal about Eurocentric beauty standards in this video. And I think she handles it beautifully. I also agree that influencers being transparent about their body augmentations is much better than lying about it. I also appreciate the disclaimer at the beginning of the video about gender affirming surgeries for trans people. Trans people will sometimes choose to pursue surgical intervention as part of their transition. Jordan says that she's excluding these instances, which is important, because while trans people may get surgery for any number of reasons, that's not something she or I are qualified to talk about. Now, beauty standards are bad, but it does hit a little bit different when it's a thin white girl with light eyes and hair saying it. Like, I just kind of wish she'd acknowledged her privilege here. At no point in the video does she say that she benefits from beauty standards. Regardless of what's in vogue right now, the thin white aesthetic is always viable. Being someone who wouldn't be able to conform to these beauty aesthetics without surgical intervention, I kind of see this from a different angle. It is so much easier to walk through the world as someone who naturally conforms. Whiteness, thinness, Eurocentric features are seen as the default neutral state. Having to exist in a non-normative body is a lot of work. I think this adds another dimension to the conversation. For example, fat people are seen by thin or average people in a really negative way. In media especially, fatness connotates laziness, greediness, even evil. So can you really blame someone who lives as a fat person, who is constantly bullied by the medical establishment and seen as less than human for getting gastric bypass surgery? I have not lived that experience. So who am I to tell them whether their choice about their body is feminist? Jordan also talks a lot about the male gaze without spending any time to unpack the male gaze. She does mention that the male gaze is a heteronormative idea, that women are seen exclusively through the eyes of men, even by themselves. But she never brings up that plastic surgery has always been popular among gay men who don't conform to traditional female beauty standards. 
So why would gay men get Botox, liposuction, and cheek implants? Because of beauty standards they have set for themselves as a community. Each community, culture, and nationality sets their own beauty standards. Beauty standards existing as a function of capitalism is a really valid argument. But beauty standards function in multiple ways in society, not just as a function of capitalism. Also mentioning that male gaze theory is hetero doesn't fully explore that many queer and gender non-conforming people have plastic surgery. Lesbians get nose jobs, straight women get breast reductions. Not to wade into too controversial waters here, but let's talk about abortion. Every abortion is an individual making a choice to end a pregnancy. Some people make that decision because they can't afford a child, or they don't want to be parents, or they have an underlying health condition. A forced birth activist, on the other hand, might say, women get abortions because they're irresponsible and they hate children. But while some might get abortions for that reason, that doesn't track for everyone. So, is getting an abortion feminist? Maybe. Say an individual seeks an abortion to end an unwanted pregnancy. This is a feminist act of asserting their rights to their body to serve their needs. But what if someone is coerced by their partner to end an unexpected pregnancy? Is that feminist? Jordan also does a bit of a shallow dive into what choice feminism is. And I mostly do agree with her assessment about why it's flawed. However, I think it is a bit more complicated than that, and it's too big of a subject to be explored as a smaller part of a larger video. She basically says she disagrees with choice feminism because it dictates that any choice made by a woman is feminist. I think that kind of oversimplifies things. Firstly, feminism is not just for women, it's for everyone. It belongs to everyone pursuing equality for everyone of all genders. Feminism is when any person focuses their efforts on pursuing gender equality and freedom for themselves and others. This necessarily has to exclude when people make choices to extend their freedom at the expense of other people's. For example, anyone who excludes trans people from their activism are not feminists. Obviously, women can do things that are antithetical to feminism. In the video, she says that people are defensive about getting plastic surgery and hide behind the mantle of feminism to justify it. But back to the central point of the video, plastic surgery is not necessarily about conforming to beauty standards. The kind of plastic surgery that conforms to beauty standards is the kind that nobody would be able to tell you had just by looking at you. And obviously, just because something feels good doesn't make it feminist. But if you as an individual make a choice for your body and how you want to exist in that body, I think that's feminist. And not everything has to be a feminist power move, but individuals are allowed to decide what is a power move for them. If getting plastic surgery makes someone feel good, they should get to make that decision for themselves. And few things women do for themselves are empowering to all women, and I don't know that that has to be our goal every single day. That sounds exhausting. When I honk at some asshole on the road, I'm using my car to tell him to fuck off, and that's empowering for me but not for every other woman in the universe. I think we should definitely strive for our actions as members of a community to be moving towards equity and freedom for all people. But not every choice we make is about that. Some people just really don't like their noses. I don't know that is X feminist is a useful question because not everything has to exist on a spectrum of feminist to misogynist. Is it feminist to cut your hair when you've been told your whole life that women should have long hair? Is it feminist to transition? Is it feminist to have children or to be child free? We don't have to question people's life choices all the live long day with, is this feminist? Again, that sounds exhausting. The important place we need to be analyzing things through intersectional feminism is in relationship dynamics, politics, the workplace. Am I advocating for myself with my partner? On a political level, are my representatives focused on equality? At my place of employment, am I being treated equally? And are those who have less privileges than me being treated with the same level of respect? While beauty is a tool and a commodity under capitalism, it's just not that simple. And beauty is not just beauty standards. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder is a phrase that gets thrown around a lot, but it's true. Beauty is not just one thing. It encompasses the whole of the human experience. And there are different kinds of beauty. Flowers are beautiful and so are fairy lights. I think that's a Tumblr post, but it's true. And not only is beauty itself complex, but beauty standards and trends are more complicated than just an ideal body type or an eye shape. While society sets beauty standards, capitalism sets the trends. I've definitely heard men appreciate women's bodies, but I've never heard them speculate on what brand of false eyelashes she's wearing. We all decide together to hold people to an impossible standard. Capitalism just gives us the tools we need to tear each other down. Now, I know nothing about plastic surgery. I'm barely even an ignorant layperson on the subject, but if you're interested in watching videos about it, I would check out Lori Hill. She has a philosophy that I really agree with, which is that plastic surgery is neutral. It's neither good nor bad. It just depends on how it's utilized. She is actually Jewish as well, so go and support another Jewish content creator. Her videos are so great. Thanks for watching. Is there any bigger indictment of the beauty industry than in this video where I was trying to talk about beauty standards, I put on makeup before I put on makeup. <laughs>
<laughs> Are you a star pippin? I think you're gonna be the end screen, bud.